This is Monterey's Cookin' Pistol Style, featuring restaurateur and master chef John Pisto. I'm John Pisto, coming to you from Monterey, California. How are you today? Good. Uh, folks, we're going to be doing a beautiful cruise in September on the Royal Cruise Line, and it's going to be called Romance of the Riviera. And first of all, I'd like to invite everybody, and this cruise is going to be departing from uh, Rome, and we're going to be going to North Africa, Puerto Fino, Corsica, and a lot of it's going to be on the French Riviera, which is, happens to be one of my favorite spots. And what we've agreed to do is to make some of the dishes of some of the ports of call that we're going to be doing. And today, being that we're going to be hitting Saint-Tropez, I thought we'd do one of the dishes that uh, I've eaten there many times. If you recall, Saint-Tropez is very well known, um, number one, because Bridget Bardot lives there, um, also Mick Jagger lives there. Jack Nicholson loves to go there during the summer. And, you know, it's quite a, quite a spot. It's a very little village, actually. Uh, very beautiful. The food is incredible. Um, I fell in love with it. We have relatives there, and we love to visit them. Uh, today, I'm going to prepare a dish called calamari a la saint -Tropez. Now, calamari, for those of you that don't know what it is, is also known as squid. Okay, this is what it looks like in its natural state. It has the tentacles, it has the body. A lot of people in the West Coast use this for bait. We eat it here also. Monterey is very well known for its squid fishing. We catch thousands of tons of squid a year. Uh, I've tasted the squid coming off the East Coast, also very delicious. I know the one coming out of Boston. I've, I've uh, had it before. It's very good, a little larger than our Pacific squid. Nowadays, you can find squid in the body form, which is the sack, which can be used for stuffing. You see, it's hollow. And the heads will come separately. Uh, very easy to eat, uh, very low in calories, simple to cook. Mediterranean people love this. I mean, Spanish have many, many recipes. Italians, uh, Portuguese. Um, I, I mean, everybody in the Mediterranean eats squid, and plus in the Orient, it's quite popular. You'll see it in sushi bars. Probably looks something like, like that in a sushi bar, but I, I think it's best cooked. Um, it's not as chewy. There's a couple of secrets you have to know about squid. You gotta cook it fast, or you have to cook it long. You do one or the other. If you cook it fast, I'm talking two, three minutes, and it's done. If you cook it long, you gotta cook it over uh, at least 20 minutes or more for it to break down. What I've done already is cut some of these up like so, so that we have, see this is all cut up, we have the bodies. Now some of these heads are a little too big for you, just cut them in half like this, you see? But these will cook up real nice, nice and chewy. They'll have a nice texture to them. Okay, let's get going with this. Let me rinse my hands off. Okay, we're gonna start with a little bit of onion, and we'll just cut it up, chop it a bit rough, and we're gonna be using all these beautiful flavors from Provence. A little fresh tomato, some fresh thyme, maybe a little herbs de Provence if we want. But, and I tell you, last year we know we did another cruise, and that one went uh, into the Greek islands, and we hit some places in Italy also, but I tell you, the Greek islands were just incredible. We went around the same time of the year uh, so that the weather was just incredible. Everybody had beautiful, beautiful time, um, had a great time because it was so warm. I'm putting about one onion, and then we're gonna put some 
chopped garlic, using some good olive oil, California olive oil. You know we have a lot of olive oil coming out of California right now. The, one of our friends is one of the biggest producers of that, Shabika. Okay, we're gonna start garlic, the onion, and then some celery. And we'll just chop that coarsely also. And um, I have to really tell you that the service on this ship, and it was a Greek line, was absolute, or excuse me, it was a Greek cruise, I think it's an English line, was absolutely incredible. Put a couple stalks of celery, just chop them up. And then I've got some potatoes that I've got boiled already, which I'm gonna use. Um, let's let this come to a boil, or let's let this fry a bit, and then we'll come right back to it, okay? This is what this is called anise or fennel available in most big supermarkets I believe all over the country. This has a very strong anise flavor to it. See, I would save this for stock or decorations. And we're going to put some of that in because boy you eat a lot of this in Europe. In Italian homes, I know we have during the winter time we do a lot to eat it just like celery, we leave it around the house and just take a bite of it like that. Very, very refreshing. Okay, that goes in. Has a nice crunch to it. And we want that to remain hard because I want some crunch in this dish. Okay, looking good. Cut this a little bit more. Now, I've got some boiled potatoes already. If you put raw potatoes, which you may do, put them in at the beginning of the dish. This, this is a nice dish served hot, room temperature, nice summer dish. I know this year we have one restaurant here in Monterey that actually sold 41 tons, that's 80,000 pounds of squid in one year. And that one restaurant, of course, specializes in calamari. And uh, like I said, Monterey has quite an industry of uh, squid fishing. We also catch sardines here. We also have anchovies and mackerel. So Monterey is quite an interesting place. And then, of course, you go to Salinas Valley, which is just down the, down the road from us, and you have all your lettuce and your, your broccoli, your cauliflower, your onions, carrots. Um, and then just right next to us on the other side, you have all your artichokes. So Monterey is, and then at the other side of the valley, you got all your wineries. We have these beautiful Chardonnays and Cabernets and Pinot Noirs that, uh, that are available to us. So. You know, Monterey's got a little bit of, little bit of everything. A little from the sea, from the land. Okay, now, that's smelling good. Now this is saffron, all right? I get it in a powdered form, and we're gonna flavor, and we're putting a good, healthy pinch. Now you're gonna see how this is gonna color this whole dish. And what I've got here is a, licorice flavored liqueur, which is called Pernod, which the French love to drink. And I'm gonna put a little bit in here so I can get the rest of that saffron out of there. Because you know, this is quite expensive stuff, folks. What I'll do is mix it up. Get the last drop. And then we're gonna add a little bit more of this. Now, can you see this color? See how this saffron has colored this? And it's gonna have that taste. Now, you know the classic taste of Provence is the saffron. It's also the, the uh, Ricard or the Perrineau. And we can't forget fresh thyme. 
All right, and we're gonna put a good handful of that. That's a good three tablespoons, I'll bet you. Oh, that sure flavored it. Okay, also, I always like to use hot pepper. This is crushed chilies. I put a nice little shot of that in there. Let's put some black pepper. I've got some fresh tomatoes. That's about a cup of tomatoes. Now we're putting a few capers. This comes from a caper bush in my house. You see these? Now usually get these packed in uh, packed in vinegar. Uh, however, we do our own. We like to pack them in salt. So to pronounce the flavor even more, we chop them up a bit, and that goes in there. You're probably asking, when are you going to put the squid? Well, pretty soon. Now, I'm going to put some olives. These are homemade black olives that have been dehydrated. We've, we leach the bitterness out by hanging it with, in, a, in a sack with salt. And all that tannin gets rubbed off or gets uh, leached out. We'll put a few of those in there. Now, this is probably good enough to eat just the way it is right now. Let's put some of our nice wine. I'm putting a good cup. And now, let's add our squid. Now this is gonna cook rather quickly. So I'm gonna just kinda stand here and stir it. And it may need a little bit more water. And if it does, we'll, we'll add it to it. But you know, some of these new places that we're going to in France, like Marseille, it's uh, quite interesting that you're going to see a heavy influence of um, of North Africa there because that became a major area for the people of North Africa to land. And you know, Saint Tropez, of course, is real interesting. The the nice restaurants, nice seafood restaurants. Now this is going to cook real quick. Now it's getting a little bit dry. Get a little water. Let's put a little water in there. Here's one that hasn't been cut. Romance of the Riviera. It was good. It's gonna be good. I know the Greek one was incredible. It's fun if you travel with a bunch of your friends. I know that's what we ended up doing. And we brought our little 10-year-old uh, daughter. And she had an absolute ball. This time, however, she's going to have to stay in school. She's not real happy about that, but that's life. We'll take her next time. Okay, you see how this is starting to cook up? This probably needs maybe another about five or six minutes, and uh, this is going to be ready to go. Okay, we'll be right back. In here just to make it that sauce because this is good for dipping the bread and you know you have that that nice uh, French bread or Italian bread you dip in there now to finish this off we're gonna chop some fresh garlic I'm using about eight nine cloves and we're gonna mix it with some flat leaf parsley I'm gonna put the two together this is done for a lot of dishes from Provence and this will add the finishing touch and you add this and you don't want this to cook too much you just want this to kind of to flavor your your dishes let's say the finishing touch to the dish so let's chop that up real good extra fine now some of the olive you know the olives may be uh, hard to get for you possibly but I'm using a a they call oil cured olive you can use that or you can use a Kalamata olive. If you use a regular old standard olive, I wouldn't suggest, I'd, I'd leave it out. I'd put more capers in them because that olive doesn't have that nice sharp flavor. Okay, this is ready to go. You see this? Now we're gonna add this. It's got the raw garlic and that nice parsley. Oh, I know another thing I should add. We're gonna add a little piece of orange peel that I've just scraped off. Just add that, a little orange zest. 
just to give it a little flavor. Okay, boy, that comes through real good. All right, I have a beautiful platter here. And let's throw some of this in here. Now, how's that look, huh? See how nice the potatoes are colored with the saffron? So you're gonna taste all these beautiful flavors of that, of the saffron and the Ricard or the Pernod, the anise flavor, and the thyme. Mm, and, the, and the orange smell comes through. Let me see, I can taste a little piece of this. Looks nice and hot. Looks a little too hot. Okay. Let this cool off before you try it. See the squid, see how nice and fluffy? See how it's fluffed up? Mmm, real tender. This is a nice one. Very nice one. Serve it with some vegetable, maybe a little broccoli. Boy, you got yourself a nice little lunch or dinner. Okay, folks, we got a few minutes extra, and I wanted to show you another dish. You know, when we were in Rome, I saw them. Uh, this is a classic bistro dish. It's called artichokes alla romana. Uh, they use the uh, European style. These are globe. These are grown here in California. I personally prefer the ones from Europe. They're a lot more tender. But, uh, you know, these do very well. Okay, to start, I don't know why they don't grow these, the European ones here. Uh, I think it's, oh, you gotta be real careful, they'll bite you. Okay, you have to, very important, take it down to where it's, you see where it's that color? Where there's a nice yellow? Okay, trim. And I tell you, every trattoria in Rome has this. They have them right outside on the antipasto bar. And uh, boy, we ate, <laughs> ate a few of these while I was there. They were just delicious. I'd say it's almost a braised. Okay, look, go like that. That's all tough in there. Okay, then I use a grapefruit spoon, you see? And just, you wanna dig that choke out See how that comes out beautifully? See what you're left with? It's gonna be all edible. We pull all that out. Pretty easy, huh? I've already taken the time to do some over here. And let me show you what we're gonna do. These are sun-dried tomatoes. We're gonna stuff sun-dry. We're gonna stuff some garlic. And we're gonna stuff some sage. All right, and we're gonna line them up. Pretty easy stuff. Okay, this, this, this. Okay. I tell you, these are little, there's a little work to do these, but once you taste them, you'll see how delicious they are. You're gonna make them quite often. You know, you have a nice dinner party. Um, if you have a bad dinner party, they're okay. Okay, make sure you put the garlic in there. All right, garlic, some of that nice sage. You know, these artichokes came from Italy. You know, they start growing them here, I think just around the turn of the century from Northern Italy. Okay, we've done that. Now we get some thyme. And we're just gonna cut that up. Got a little bit of thyme. Let me use the rest of this. Okay, some thyme. And this is some fresh oregano that we picked out in our yard. We're gonna spread that all over it. This is that save, uh, the uh, sage. We're gonna put that. And then I'm gonna put uh, pepper. Give it a good healthy shot of pepper. Good, healthy shot of red pepper. This is, you gotta use a lot of olive oil on this. And you'll see why, because after, it's gonna taste so good. And we wanna give this some salt. Let's roll it around like this, like this, like this. Oh, lost our garlic and put it back in, okay. Now this is gonna take a little while to cook. Here's some of that nice white wine. And we're gonna 
put all that nice wine in there. Okay, and there's a little bit more. All right. Now, this goes into the oven for about 45 minutes. And when this comes out, this is going to be so delicious. This has got to probably cook at about 350. All right, and we got to put a cover on it. And I'm going to use some tin foil. This is probably one of the better ways that I like to cook artichokes. Okay, let's check it in about 45 minutes. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, folks, here we go. A la Romana. Look at that. Don't those look good? Oh, that's... oh, this whole thing is edible. Boy, those fresh herbs, incredible smell. We want some of this beautiful juice. This is for you, Artichokes a la Romana. <laughs>